it may be that you're off to the United States, possibly taking in New York. Now, a few weeks ago, we looked at going gluten-free on a plane, but what if you're actually in the Big Apple, you arrive there on vacation, okay, I'll say vacation, and wonder where the best places are to eat for a celiac. Lynn Mendelssohn has the answer. Hook up with her and she'll take you round the best and sometimes the little known restaurants and delis and cafes and markets that are G-free in NYC. I want to say it's a world first because I haven't actually seen it anywhere either. Um, it was actually my whole idea. I've been gluten-free for over four years. What are you allergic to? What's, what's your story? I'm gluten and dairy-free. I was diagnosed with a lactose intolerance when I was in the uh, third grade, and I was still having a digestive issues my entire life. I could never go through a meal without not getting sick. So basically, when I was in college, I was diagnosed with IBS, and then about four years ago, I actually self-diagnosed myself as being gluten-free. So I actually haven't been tested. The a difference with how I feel is just amazing. I was tired all the time. I was also having lots of uh, digestive issues. And I had a lot of uh, uh, joint pain. And I don't have like any of that right now. When I was in college, I had to always be close to a bathroom. I really didn't have the ideal uh, social life when I was in college. So it could be a bit of a trial, couldn't it, living in a fantastic city like New York? I come into the city in the summers, and I'd never be able to eat anything. I couldn't have pizza. I couldn't have different sandwiches because of the cheese and all the other things. And I would still end up getting sick. And all of those fantastic street stalls as well that you couldn't, uh, couldn't take the pretzels from, or, or, the, or the ball games and, and, and all those vendors there. I mean, it's a nightmare. It definitely is. <laughs> Take us through what you, you found a few a few haunts, so a few specialist restaurants that you were able to go to, some cafes, some bars, some delis and that kind of thing, did you? And you thought, hold on, this is too good to be true. There must be other people like me. I can introduce them to my favourite places. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I actually found a whole bunch of uh, bakeries in the city, and I have to tell you, dessert is my favourite meal. It's you always start a meal with dessert, shouldn't you? Yeah, I think you should. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so I found a whole bunch of really good uh, bakeries, and then I found uh, tons of really good restaurants. But so many restaurants say they have gluten-free options, but then in the back, they'll just try to make you something gluten-free, and, you know, it can get cross-contaminated, and I end up just getting so sick all the time, even though I went gluten-free, but all the restaurants I would try to go out to eat, I would still get sick at. So I did so much uh, research before I made a really good uh, list of uh, restaurants that are actually safe to eat at. And you really kind of uh, sussed these out, did you, and went literally behind the scenes, I guess, to see exactly what they were doing, how they were preparing food, and that they understood about that cross-contamination you mentioned. Absolutely. And I really only go to places that have gluten-free menus, because then I know they know what they're doing. Yes, it's not a matter of just leaving off the croutons, is it? Exactly. Exactly. You were mentioning the uh, the desserts there. New York, famous for its cheesecake, of course. So have you found a terrific New York cheesecake? I did find a really good uh, cheesecake that is actually also dairy-free that they have in New York, so that's really good. And um, I found a New York cheesecake that's perfect for people that are not allergic to uh, milk. There's um, tofu cheesecakes and some other different ones, but... So talk us through then your tour. You meet up with, uh, with a couple of guys who've... Uh, in from out of town or from out of the country and they come to you, you meet them up on a street corner or at the hotel reception and then it's off. So where are you taking them? What delights are they sampling? Depending on the a, a time of day, of course. So if we start in the morning, I'm taking them to a bakery so they can have their muffin or they can have a donut and a coffee just to start the day where we'll probably have the bakery owner come over and talk to us and tell us their a story of how they got into the business and how long they had been gluten-free and everything else. Um, and then, depending on the time of, of the day, we will walk around the city. Um, there is a farmer's market that they actually have of gluten-free items, so that's really always really nice, especially if the, if the uh, weather is really good. I'm also a health coach. So I talk about all the different healthy foods along the way, and I like to hear from all the people that I give a, a tour to about their lives, and I like to know just, you know, what led you to being gluten-free. 
And we kind of just walk to all different places. They have samples. I get people uh, gift cards on the tour. So this way, you know, you can really enjoy everything on the tour. I actually give them a list of everywhere that we have visited, along with other places that were not included on the tour. They're all sorted, aren't they? And if they're driving then out of town, they can they can perhaps stock up, can't they, before they go? Yes, yes, um, they can definitely. Um, and actually, at the end of the tour, we go to an all gluten free place that they can stock up on a whole bunch of items. Excellent. So, what is it? Where is the place, or what is the food? that when they sample it or when they walk through the door, they go every single time, well, this is heaven. I think the uh, a pizza place would definitely have to be it. I think I found the best gluten-free pizza place in the entire world. <laughs> I think it's the best place in the entire world, but then again, um, I've only visited, you know, so many places. But I do think it's better than actually even Italy pizza. How is the provision of food changing in the stores and in the restaurants and in the cafes and bars? People now know they don't have to settle for just gluten-free food. Because you know how you always were told it tastes good for gluten-free food? You shouldn't have to hear that. It should be just as good as food that has gluten. So the places that I bring people, more often than not, they have somebody with them that's not gluten-free. And they really don't taste so much of a difference. They'll eat the food just like everybody else, and it'll taste just as good as regular food. And are the wait staff becoming more up to speed with cross-contamination? And when people say they're celiac, are they more up to speed with, with those kind of phrases and the, and the logistics? Um, I think it depends on the restaurant still. You know, it really all depends on the uh, management. If the management is not really, you know, telling their wait staff what to do and giving them instructions. A lot of people still really have no idea. Like, I've gone into several restaurants that I thought should know what, you know, gluten-free is, and they had no idea. They really had no idea. Like, they, they had it on their menu that they can make items gluten-free, but they had no idea. Is it best, you think, in your experience to go to a, a, a small family-owned private restaurant or, or a big chain? Where do they understand the issues more? I kind of like the family atmosphere. Especially if somebody in that family had celiac disease or was gluten-free, because then they actually have a greater understanding and appreciation for it. There are some good chains that, you know, do have really good uh, uh, gluten-free menus. Uno's, I know I have by me, um, and there's a whole bunch of other little uh, chain places that have gluten-free menus. And they go through everything. So, I mean, that's really good. And I think chains are really important, too, because, you know, we have them everywhere and, you know, for, you know, for everyone that wants the uh, convenience, a chain is, you know, what you're going to find. I mean, Olive Garden's excellent. California Pizza Kitchen is pretty good. A Chipotle actually has some good items that they'll make gluten-free for you. Um, their tours here, I have to say, I'm not exactly so uh, uh, trustworthy, though, when you make the tortilla on the same grill and you have to clean it. Because you never know. There could be a small, you know, trace of gluten still on there. So I won't have that. I know that a lot of the um, places in the city are a lot better than the places that I've visited, like in New Jersey and, you know, in Boston and some places in California. Although I want to say California is great. I had just gone there on a recent trip, and L.A. has tons of, of gluten-free places also. But um, I think New York City is one of the top places with all the, you know, gluten-free know how and they know what like a celiac is well, we would expect nothing less than one of the best cities in the world would we <laughs> i think it's kind of vying for attention with london but they you know heck we're uh, we're both a little bit biased aren't we <laughs> <laughs> so if, uh, if people want to to come on your tour to meet you and to get all your fantastic expertise and life experience of living in and around new york city and they want a, a personal introduction to some of the best places to eat that they're guaranteed they won't get sick at how do they contact you? Glutenfreenyc.net. But right now, all my tours are available on a viable, V-A-Y-A-B-L-E dot com. And you can just search a gluten-free tours. And I'm going to be going out to all the different hotels in New York City. So all the uh, concierges are aware when you come into the city and when you book a hotel. So then I will just need 48 hours notice to get you on a tour. And our thanks and best wishes to Lynn Mendelson, who runs those tours. If you want to follow Lynn on Twitter, it's, oh, what a great name. What a great name. Not Lynn Mendelson, obviously. That's not without its charm. But, but the Twitter name, at 
Travel, laugh, love. Is that great? Oh, what a good philosophy for life. Travel, laugh, love. I like that. Like that a lot. So uh, if you find yourself in the Big Apple, then uh, you know what to do to uh, make sure that you're not hit by the gluten. Lynn will show you around and show you where to go.